Hello, my friends. It is Saturday. I have a lot to catch up with you on. It was a rough week. It was a rough week. Emotionally a rough week. But we'll talk about all that later. Um, Anne is down for the weekend. Her and Andrew are at the shore today. Doug is at Deacon School. And I am tackling... Yes, all the summer and winter clothes, swapping them out. I need to downsize. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, so I've been working on this, straightening up the house because it was a week. Like I said, I'll talk about all that later. Um, but that's about it. I really don't know. We have no plans this weekend. It's going to be wonderful. So I'm not even sure you're going to see this vlog because there may be nothing to show you. And that's good. <laughs> Cause we need a weekend like that. Um, but I do want to catch up on a couple of things. So it just might be a short one, but anyway, I am going to get back to these clothes. Oh, I did eat breakfast this morning and totally forgot to film. I had a bagel, one of the, um, a versus street sprout at bagels. It is 250 calories. And I had two tablespoons of cream cheese on it. Um, and that's what I had for breakfast. I was not in the mood for anything, but I was really hungry. We had poker last night. I overate, 100% overate. I ate my feelings a little bit last night, which is something I never, ever do. So that was a little weird for me, but um, I did. I just, I ate too much last night. You know, looking back, Doug's like, you really didn't. He said, you, you think you did, but you didn't. But I think I did, so it's neither here nor there it's over and I've moved on so we are gonna I think barbecue chicken tonight I'm trying to find stuff I'm have to run out real quick um we're gonna barbecue chicken tonight and I think it's just gonna be Doug and I because the kids will probably eat at the shore so that's that I am going to run a quick errand hopefully no one will see me because finish getting those clothes taken care of and then jump in the shower so we are at church I meant to vlog on the way here and forgot I have not picked up the camera all afternoon um Doug got home from school I was like crazy woman you saw me this morning then Doug got home from school and we just started chit-chatting and talking about school and next thing we knew we were napping <laughs> we were up really really late last night um so we were just, we're just tired. So it was really nice. It, it's a low key weekend. I'm going to be, I'm looking for my Usher badge. Is it in there? Is that it? That's one. Can you find mine in there? Yes. If it's in there. Um, but tomorrow I'm going to be busy uh, making dinner and stuff like that. I have some kitchen projects to do tomorrow. But we are over at church and I'm so sad because for the next probably eight to 10 weeks, our church is closed. We are getting all new floors and all new kneelers on the pews. It's going to be wonderful, but we have to have church, or we have to have mass in our church hall. And I know church can be anywhere. It's just not the same. You know, we have such a beautiful, beautiful church um, and I just love it. And being in the hall. <laughs> now, 20 years ago before the church was built, they had church in the hall while the church was being built for, gosh, a couple years, right? Was it a couple years? Um, at least a year. So, a lot, for a lot of these people, it's going back. Um, but we were not members of this parish at that point. So, yeah. So, it'll be fine. It'll be a quick, hopefully, eight to ten weeks. It'll just be a little bit different. But it doesn't matter because where two or three are gathered in his name, even if it's in a hall, it'll be fine. So, anyway, we got to get in there because we have a usher ministry today and it's time for us to get to work so this is our parish center right here um, that's our parish offices this is the parish center where we have all of our events or everything there is our Mary shrine so yeah gonna be interesting come on in and let's take a look okay friends we are home from church and already changed um, we are gonna get dinner ready it is 6 30 we're a little bit hungry um, we're going to just grill some chicken and I'm going to make some zucchini and with some tomatoes and onions and asparagus. So that's going to be dinner. If you hear that whining in the background, 
We are dog sitting. This is Aria's sister. This is Mia. Hi, do Mia. And they are sisters um, from the same litter. And uh, what? Yes. Aria is definitely bigger than Mia and fatter than <laughs> Mia, but they're good doggies. So we're just having Mia for a couple hours today. Mia misses her mommy and daddy and is been a bit whiny. Go lay down. She'll be fine. Um, what else did I, I meant to show you around the hall and it just was crowded and I forgot at the end. So what else did I want to tell you? I have some happy mail to show you. I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, oh, we've got some garden bounty. We have more lettuce than like we can eat. We have been eating salads like crazy people. Not having one tonight, taking a break from salad tonight, but we'll make one tomorrow. Picking a lot of romaine and butter lettuce. Um, and picked a cucumber yesterday and ate that. Okay, Mia, enough. And now, show you what we just picked right now. Hang on. So this is what we picked today. We picked three really nice cucumbers, a couple little grape tomatoes, and one really nice zucchini. There's more cucumbers out there that are gonna be ready in a couple days. And also several more zucchini. So we will definitely incorporate one of these cucumbers into dinner tonight, the tomatoes and the zucchini. And girls were a little light today on the eggs. So I just love being able to go out in the backyard and just pick the herbs and pick the vegetables and get the eggs. I just, just love it. Okay, I'm getting the stuff in the house started. I'm just making a quick, we call it zucchini casserole. It's really not a casserole. Um, I just take an onion, slice it up. And with this, like there's really no measurements. Like I'm only making this for two of us. So I use two small zucchini. I didn't have any regular tomatoes. I used grape tomatoes, cut those up, threw them in there. Half an onion sliced in about a tablespoon of butter. I'm going to put the lid on and let this cook down until the zucchini is um, soft and everything is cooked through. Then I usually finish it with just a little bit of cheddar cheese on top. I'm going to put salt and pepper. My sister-in-law puts Italian seasoning on it. I don't love that, so I'll just throw a little bit of garlic powder on it. And that'll be one of our side dishes. Doug is over here working on just cleaning out the fridge a little bit. It's this week, I know I still haven't told you everything that went on this week. This week's just been a little bit crazy, so things got ignored over there. Um, we're also pulling out watermelon radishes. We're going to grill these up, put those on the grill. We have a little bit of roasted sweet potatoes left. Doug wanted me to heat those up for him. And I have a tiny little bit of fresh bruschetta here from Poker Night. I'm going to throw this into this when this is done because it's just you know tomatoes and onions and it'll taste good so i just don't want to waste anything especially while we're in pantry challenge so that's what's going on here right now i'll show you my dinner when it is all done and delicious okay we are sitting down to dinner and listening to the phillies game they are in the bottom of the 12th inning hopefully they can hold on to their lead and end this with a win but while we're listening to that, we are, like I said, eating dinner. This is some of that zucchini casserole. I have roasted asparagus, grilled radishes, and some barbecue chicken. And I am drinking some sun tea that didn't get very dark. I didn't have a whole lot in there, but it is delicious. So that is our dinner. Good morning, friends. It is early Sunday morning and... Happy Father's Day to everyone out there who is a dad, who has a role of a dad, whatever. Hope you have a wonderful day. Um, I am up and making spaghetti sauce. I thought I had some in the freezer and then I remembered that I gave it to Adam. So I am making a pot of spaghetti sauce because Doug's requested Father's Day dinner was lasagna. So can't have lasagna without the sauce so we are getting the sauce going that just takes a couple hours easy peasy um oh just looking to see what doug was doing the, uh andrew and ann had a great time at the shore yesterday they are now getting ready to go to church andrew has to go to 
church at the church where he is the director of religious education. I think I told you guys that, that he got a part-time job working for the church that's associated with the school he was at um, as the DRE, the director of religious education. Um, that is like, back in the day, we called it CCD. It's for the kids who go, who attend public school. It's their religious ed. It's their like Sunday school, but it's not on Sundays. It's usually sometime during the week at night or after school or whatever. So anyway, he has to go to that church today. He has got a couple kids making a sacrament. So that is where him and Ann are headed in just a few minutes. Um, sorry, I keep looking down. I'm watching my sausage. So... Doug requested wok toast and eggs for breakfast and bacon, so that's what he is going to get. The kids, I am making a German puff pancake for, and I think I'm just going to have some kind of eggs. Um, I'm not in the mood for guac toast. So, that's what's going on here. Um, most important is to get this sauce started. I should have used a bigger pot. I wasn't making a whole big batch, but now I'm looking and I should have used a bigger pot, but I already have all the good caramelization from the sausage on the bottom of this one, so I'm not switching. Um, it'll just have to do. What else today? I need to get some kitchen work done today. Um, I need to get this lasagna made, and there's a few other things. I, I need bread. I think, I think after Doug eats breakfast, I think we're out of bread. So I gotta get just a couple loaves of bread going. I can do that in my sleep. Um, I definitely need to make English muffins this week. I'm just not sure when, I gotta figure that out. So I am gonna go finish putting this sauce together and then I'll be back to chit chat. How I make my spaghetti sauce is my mom's recipe. I start with Italian sausage and I brown it in a little bit of olive oil and I put and I take an onion cut it in half and put it in there normally the onion doesn't fall apart like this but I was a little bit aggressive on my flipping of the sausage um, once the sausage is nice and brown and you have a lot of that good caramelization on the bottom of the pot I'm just going to add I'm going to turn off the burner I'm going to add three cans of tomato puree now Sometimes I do two cans, sometimes I do four cans. Just depends on how much sauce I wanna make. I should have probably just done two or used my bigger pot for the three. So we're gonna do three cans of that. And then for every can of puree, the cans of puree are the 28 ounce cans, the big cans. For every one can of puree, we're going to add a 12 ounce can of paste. I don't have 12 ounce cans, I have six ounce cans. So I'm gonna have to add two for every one can of paste. I mean puree. So we're gonna add six cans of paste. Okay, so after you get all the paste added in, I add, depending on the cans, I have to add six cans of water. And I use the paste cans because it gets it helps to clean out the paste that's left. Like I said, I really should have used a bigger pot. Um, while you're doing this, it's best to turn off the burner because it will start popping and cooking right away. Okay, next thing I'm gonna add are some red pepper pieces, or green pepper pieces. And then we can start turning it back up a little bit to get it cooking. Then we're gonna add our spices. Now on my website, on the recipe, I do have measurements. I don't measure, I listen to my heart. So we're gonna put in some garlic powder some oregano. You can always adjust the seasonings about an hour in. Basil, this is homegrown, home dried basil. Some parsley. 
two bay leaves. I'll give you a measurement on that one. Two bay leaves. Salt. Some pepper. I don't do a lot of pepper, just a few little turns. And then here is where you can decide what you wanna do. And I didn't get it ready, so I'll just do that off camera. You can either put in about a tablespoon of sugar just to cut some of the acid, or you can just take a carrot. I always peel my carrot. Um, you don't have to, as long as you wash it really well. But, um, and just throw a carrot in. The carrot will be the sweetness in place of the sugar. But you only need about, in this size pot, a tablespoon of sugar for the whole pot. And that just helps cut the acid a little bit, like I said, in the tomatoes. I have a friend whose husband likes a very sweet sauce. She puts a whole cup of sugar in her sauce. I cannot even imagine what that tastes like. But I don't like a sweet sauce. So then you just need to really stir this well. And you can see the tomato paste is very chunky. So you just need to get in there and really break that up and really stir it well. And then after you're done all that, you just let it cook like a simmer. Let it, I bring it up to a boil and then turn it down to a, just a low simmer and I let it cook for several hours. About an hour in, you can go in and give it a little taste and adjust the seasonings to your own taste. And also if it's too thick, you can add a little bit more water. Like I said, this is all your preference and you really can't mess it up. That's why you don't have to worry too much about um, measurements for the spices and things like that. So there we have it. I'm going to go get that carrot, throw it in here, and then just let it sit and do all the work itself. Okay, there it is. It's all combined. It is starting to boil a little bit. So I am just going to turn it down and let it simmer, cover it with a lid, not fully on, just a little bit cocked and just let it go and give it a stir every once in a while. And like I said, in about an hour, I'll give it a little taste and adjust any seasonings. It is so easy to just make your own spaghetti sauce. A beautiful way to enjoy the morning tea. Out on the swing, doggy on the lap, and honey bunny next to me. Okay, swing time over. We've got the sky cooking the bacon. Sauce is looking wonderful. I've got bread going over here, and then we have a whole list of other things we want to do. Oh, I have apples peeled and just sitting in some lemon water um, so they don't turn brown. I'm making Andrew and Ann a German puff pancake with apples for breakfast, so they're just prepared and ready. Um, I have some bread here that we bought for a recipe the other day. And I don't know if you can see, the entire loaf had a hole right through the middle. And we couldn't use it because it was for bruschetta. And there was no place to put the bruschetta because there was holes in it. So I am going to just toast this bread up and turn it into breadcrumbs at some point today. Um, so right now, that's what's going on in my, look, messy working kitchen. Okay, sitting down to brunch. This just shows you how indecisive I am. I've got one dippy egg and one scrambled egg because I couldn't decide. There was the end of a of the loaf of bread left, so I just toasted that up and put a quarter teaspoon of butter on it, and I have two strips of crispy bacon. So that is my breakfast this morning. Is are you enjoy? Oh, sorry. Are you enjoying your avocado toast? Yeah. Good. <laughs> okay. Ignore the mess in the kitchen. Now I'm starting on. Doug and I are done breakfast. I'm starting on the kids' breakfast. And I'm making them a puff pancake, but I'm doing it with apples. So I just have, um, I think it's like three small apples that I just sliced up. And I have about a tablespoon of butter in the pan. I put a couple tablespoons of brown sugar on them and I'm just gonna sprinkle some cinnamon, measure with your heart. I need to fill my cinnamon. And I'm gonna let these cook 
until they are nice and soft and cooked and caramely and all that good stuff. And then this is gonna be the base of our puff pancake. Some people call it a puff pancake. Some people call it a the Walls of Jericho. Um, it's also called a, what else? Is, there's another name. What? German, German pancake, German puff pancake, puff pancake, Walls of Jericho. And I think there might be one more thing it's called. I don't know. But I'm just gonna let these apples cook, like I said, until they're nice and soft and caramelized. And then I'll show you the batter that we're gonna put on top. And we're just gonna get those in the oven to bake. Okay, I forgot to grab the camera. This is the batter for the puff pancake. It's just flour, eggs, milk, vanilla, flour, eggs. I know, I'm, I'm trying to remember now. <laughs> flour, milk, eggs, and vanilla, right? I thought there was one more thing. The recipe is on my website. I will link it, definitely. Um, but yeah, I think that's all there is. <laughs> Okay, there's our beautiful apples. Now normally, if you're not, if I'm not using a fruit, I'm making this plain. I put this in the oven while it's preheating to get the skillet hot, but the skillet is really hot from cooking in it. So I'm just going to pour my batter right over top of the apples. Get it all out of there. And then we're gonna pop this in a 425 degree oven for about 20 minutes or so. You just gotta keep an eye on it. You don't you want it to cook but not get too brown okay moving right along on our kitchen duties we are making the lasagna noodles well actually all four of us were standing around watching the lasagna noodles be made and then somehow doug took over in the cutting um just absolutely so easy with the pasta machine just throw everything in it mixes it rests it needs it extrudes and we just stand here and we cut them about eight eight and a half inches, um, depending on what size pan we're going to use. And as you can see, they look absolutely beautiful. Okay, while well, he's finishing up the noodles, I am moving on. I have the ground beef, just a pound of ground beef. I have that um, cooked with just some salt and pepper. And then I have my cheese mixture. It's ricotta cheese, just one. I'm making a small lasagna today because it's just the four of us. So it's 15 ounces of ricotta two eggs, eight ounces of shredded mozzarella, um, Parmesan cheese, I forget how much I put in there, I have to look at the, my recipe, some garlic salt, pepper, I'm sorry, garlic powder, pepper and parsley. And I'm just gonna mix this all up. Then all of our components are ready to go. I just have to assemble the, the lasagna. Okay, of course I started assembling, you know, before I picked up the camera. I just put some sauce on the bottom and then three noodles, then some ground beef, half the ground beef, and now I'm gonna do half the cheese. And just spread that out. I'm working quickly because I still have the noodles in the water. Normally, if I'm using commercial dry pasta, I just dump them into a colander in the sink. I don't like to do that with fresh pasta because it tends to be a little bit stickier and I don't want to ruin my beautiful noodles. Okay, so let's just spread that out. And now I'm gonna go grab noodles, hang on. And then I'm just gonna put another layer of noodles on there. You also don't burn yourself if you put them in a colander in the sink. But, you know, as much as I cook, I've got like Kevlar hands or uh, asbestos hands, asbestos fingers, that's the word. This one was a little bit thinner, but it's fine. And then we just put more sauce meat, cheese, and with noodles and sauce. And that's our lasagna. Okay, so next up is some breadsticks, like kind of like Olive Garden breadsticks. I'm not gonna take you through the whole recipe because you've seen me make bread a hundred times and it's really no different, but I will link this recipe down below. 
in the description box for you. Um, I've never made it before. If it doesn't come out good, I won't link it. I am having the recipe. It makes 24 breadsticks and that's too many. So I'm having the recipe. But now that's going on. And then once that's done, we are good to go. We are done in the kitchen for the day. Okay, sandwich bread out of the oven. I decided to do my Pullman pan loaf recipe this time instead of just the other two. I don't know why, because I felt like it. So I'm gonna let this cool in the pan for just a few and then I'm gonna turn it out and let it cool completely. Once it is 110% cool, I'll get that sliced up and stored. And I think I will be outside on the swing in about 20 minutes. Okay, there she is. Not the most perfect loaf. This is the bottom. My seams weren't great. Um, I was, yeah, but that's okay. Like Jessica over at Three Rivers Homestead says, it'll fill bellies. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is I just want to get this sauce packaged up. That's the nice thing about making a big pot at one time. You're going to have it for a while. Just package it up, put it in the freezer. Makes for a nice, easy, quick next meal. Um, how I like to do it is I use my super cubes. I've showed these before. They are awesome. They are silicone food grade cubes. They come in all different sizes. This is the one cup but it also has markings for a half a cup and a one cup. Um, eventually I'm gonna add the two cup one to my arsenal, but I just put my sauce in and I do one cup and then it comes with a tight fitting lid. You just pop it in the freezer. I wait till this cools, let it freeze until it's hard. And then you can put them in, oh, there's a onion. You can put them in a Ziploc bag or however you like to store things. I use my food saver. Then that way I definitely don't have any uh, chance of air getting in and have them get freezer burnt. So there's that and you just pop the lid on. Now I, may, I used them the other day to freeze leftover porkette. So I'll show you what it looks like when something is frozen and comes out. So these have been in the freezer with porkette in them. Ta-da. So you just pop them right out of the silicone mold. Look at that. These are dishwasher safe. So I got three and like a little half out of that. So I will just put those all in a food saver bag and there is at least four sandwiches there. So quick, easy dinner some night. And then I'll just wash this up and get more spaghetti sauce in it. Okay, while I am waiting for the bread dough, bread stick dough to finish rising, I'm just gonna go get changed and go outside and we are going to put up the hammock and straighten up the yard a little. Over here in the corner, we've got Wedding Central going on. I think I told you the other night, my sister and I were working on the hotel swag bags and the pretzels are going in. water bottles, and then his favorites, her favorites. I printed out the labels on paper to make sure we like them. Bags, and we are in business. The rest of the stuff is at my sister's, but we have everything. The labels are getting printed out and we are good to go. We are so happy with the way they're gonna turn out. Okay, we are done in the kitchen and we are as you can see out on the hammock, just kind of chilling for a little bit. I think my timer has seven more minutes and I have to go in and shape the, um, what are they called? Breadsticks. And I can't open my eyes because the sun is directly in them. <laughs> so we're just gonna lay here and relax for a few minutes, catch our breath and on to the next job. Okay, got the breadsticks all done. I just divided the dough into 12 equal pieces rolled them into balls, then rolled them into logs. Not the prettiest, but that's okay. I'm sure they will be delicious. They smell really, really good. So I'm just gonna let them rise for a little bit. You don't have to, you can put them right in the oven from here, but it's still a little bit early. It's only 2.30. I wanna eat dinner at 4.30. Um, that way Ann can get on the road right after dinner. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Let these rise for about 45 minutes or so and then start getting everything going.
Okay, parts? now next thing I'm gonna do is make up some dressing. We're having a salad tonight with homegrown lettuce and homegrown cucumbers and homegrown tomatoes. So I'm excited about that. Um, I have my Italian dressing mix here. This is just something I keep on hand, just like I do my taco mix and my barbecue rub and all that. Um, I am just putting it in a jar. I'm gonna add a quarter cup of just plain old white vinegar, two thirds cup of extra virgin olive oil and two tablespoons of water. Mix it up and that will be our dressing. Okay, so I have my two tablespoons of mix. In here, I have two thirds cup of olive oil and I just put the water right in there with it. We're gonna just add that in. And then we're just gonna add the quarter cup of vinegar. Andrew was making fun of my vinegar bottle. Mm. Weren't you? Was not making fun of it, I was just saying. I've had this bottle. vinegar bottle for like, probably the entire time we've been married. I just keep refilling it because I buy it by like the two gallon because of all the canning I do. So I just keep refilling this little bottle. I don't even think it comes glass anymore. I think it might come plastic. So it's pretty old, but waste not, what not. Reduce, reuse, recycle, all that good stuff. So we're just gonna put the lid on, give it a good shake, and stick it in the fridge because we have about two hours till dinner. That way the flavors will blend nicely. And there is our delicious dressing that has no funky stuff in it. I'm gonna see, Andrew's not a huge Italian dressing fan, so I'm gonna see if he wants me to make him maybe a honey mustard or something, not sure. But if I do, I'll show you that. Okay, so Andrew's not a big fan of Italian dressing and because he's spoilt, I'm gonna make some honey mustard for him. I want to make honey mustard and I'm out of mayonnaise. So I'm going to first make some mayonnaise. So in my jar here, I have one egg, half a tablespoon of lemon juice, one teaspoon of white wine vinegar, quarter teaspoon of Dijon mustard, quarter teaspoon of salt, and now I'm just adding one cup of olive oil. I generally use avocado oil, but my avocado oil bottle's empty, and I was too lazy to walk downstairs and get more. 100% the truth there. I'm gonna pour it in, I'm just gonna wait for everything to settle, and then we're just gonna blend it up with the immersion blender. Okay, looks like it's settled. So I am just going to put this in, hold it on the bottom, and then start, it's easier to do it this way, moving it up and down. Got our nice thick mayonnaise. Now we'll make the honey mustard dressing. Someone is thoroughly enjoying their Father's Day, I believe. Yes, yes, indeed I am. <laughs> He's been out here for about two hours. Maybe a little nap, maybe a little playing on his phone, but I am so happy to see him just laying here relaxing. I got to be out here for about 15 minutes or so with him, so that was nice too. But dinner's gonna be done in about 20 minutes, so I'm gonna have to interrupt his time. Okay. And he's hungry anyway, he said. Yeah, yeah. Everybody is dust bathing today. They are just digging like crazy holes and enjoying the dirt. You can see her there. Oh, maybe, maybe not. That's what they like to do. Dig holes, kick up the dirt, get it under their feathers, roll around in it, and then shake it all out. It's basically how they clean themselves.
while I am waiting for dinner to get done, I just want to share a little bit of happy mail with you. My dear subscriber who has turned into a long distance friend, Karen and her husband, Warren, heard my lament about my mandolin and she reached out to me and said, we have a brand new one sitting here. We used it once, we're scared of it. We would love to send it to you. I was so honored and it came. It is a really, really nice mandolin. It is the, the Good Grips by OXO or OXO, however you say it. And it's the stand-up kind. It's all stainless steel. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, I am going to use it in good health. I am going to use it with the guard or with my slicing glove. I really prefer the slicing glove. If you have a mandolin, invest in a slicing glove. It's, it's much safer and yeah. And she also sent me, and I just found out her daughter made this, a wonderful canvas tote bag with a chicken on it. And it says farm sweet farm i love it it's huge it's got a zipper to close it it's got a zipper pouch inside and it's so funny because when i showed it to doug he, we both had the same first thought <gasps> that would be great for the farmer's market so thank you so much karen and warren it it's so humbling it is just so humbling that you would take the time to do that and i appreciate it beyond compare and I already put them all away, so I can't show you because I was so excited. Kim sent me more books. You know, Kim collects the Taste of Home annual recipes and the Quick Cooking annual recipes. Well, I started collecting them just so I can put the magazines away. I just have too many, and I love having the annual. It's just easier to find things. So Kim's been picking those up for me when she sees them. She sent me a box with a couple of those in it. And then those Rachel Hollis, I think her name is, books. Girl, wash your face and girl, stop apologizing. So I cannot wait to read those. So yeah, what a great weekend. So I think there's about three more minutes on the timer and I am going to get dinner on the table so we can eat and Miss Ann can get on the road back to Connecticut. You haven't even seen those guys. They've kind of been busy all weekend, which is nice. I'm glad they get to do stuff together. And they really do try to see each other about once a month. So that's really nice. Um, you know, it's hard. It's hard, uh, you know, when you live three hours away. And right now, Adam is an hour and a half away from Bella. She lives in Maryland. She's about an hour and a half away. And he's been able to see her a couple times. Um, he's off on Wednesdays and Thursdays. So last Wednesday, he drove down to her and they went to a baseball game and had a really good time. So it was nice that they got to see each other. What else? Uh, oh, what I was saying about having a hard week. So this was my last week of full-time daycare with my kiddos. Um, Cause you know, I, I like my summers off. So I watch teachers kids. Um, I do work a little bit part-time over the summer because I have one little girl, um, just a couple days. And um, that's super duper easy. But last week was rough because I said goodbye to Finn, who, you know, started off really rough with me and had to leave for a couple months, but came back and was just wonderful. But he's going to school in the fall. But mom asked me if I would be willing to, to pick up maybe two days a week with him on days he's not in school. And I said, absolutely. But my heart was crushed on Friday. It was the end of an era. <laughs> I have had someone from Jack's family for eight years straight. I started watching his sister, Belle, when she was four months old. And now she is eight and a half years old or eight years old. I had his sister, Riley, his sister, Emmy, and then, of course, Jack. Well, Friday was my last day. Jack is starting school in the fall. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. He'll be in pre-K. Um, that one hit hard. He has become like my little best friend. Like we have, you know, the, the best adventures together and he's just so funny. He is comic relief just when you need it. He, he is so funny. So saying goodbye was hard. See, getting all choked up again. <laughs> but it was hard saying goodbye to the family because it's been eight years. But it's not goodbye. It's just see you later. 
you know, I told her if, if ever you need me, just call. If one of the kids is sick and you need me to watch them, if something happens, if there's a day off and you need me to watch them, just, I would love to have them. Um, and I'm sure I'll see him over the summer and yeah, we'll see each other. It's just not having him every day is going to be really different for both of us. Um, so it was, a, it was a rough week. It was, it was an emotional, emotional week. Um, oh my gosh. And Adam, <laughs> Adam had a, like a little bit of, I don't want to say a rough night at work, but he, he alluded to it a little bit. He put up a daily vlog the other day. I'll link it down below on his channel. Um, he alluded to it a little bit, but didn't talk too much about it. Someone, one of the clients got, um, they had to go to the hospital and Adam was asked to escort him to the hospital. So that was, you know, something totally new for Adam and all. And it, it went well, he did a really good job and they really, really like him you know, where he's working for his internship and he just loves it. So who knows, maybe it'll turn into something more. Um, you just don't know, but anyway, that's the catch up. That's the catch up. So my timer is going off. I feel my wrist buzzing. I always set the timer on my Apple watch. I love it because then I can be anywhere and it goes off. So I'm going to go pull this lasagna out. I'm going to check on the breadsticks and we're going to get dinner on the table. Okay, sitting down to dinner, I have half a piece of sausage. I have a little piece of lasagna and one of the breadsticks I made, plus a salad. I'm not sure what kind of dressing I'm gonna have yet. That'll be a game time decision. So that's my dinner for tonight. I ate my cake before I vlogged it. So this is our dessert. It is called Stocks Pound Cake. It is, I think it's local to Philly. I'm not sure, but it is the best pound cake ever. Um, I bought it from a fundraiser um, and they delivered it like yesterday or the day before. So we saved some for Father's Day, but the rest of it is going in the freezer. Out of sight, out of mind. Dinner was so good. I'm glad Doug picked that. Um, but I was very in control, had a very thin slice of cake. So that was all good. Um, I had one breadstick and a little piece of lasagna. I did eat the second half of my, I cut the sausage in half, um, but I did eat the second half of the sausage. There's a ton of protein in that, so that's good. Um, sat and did my website, because I did not, usually Friday night is when I um, update it, and I did not, so I just sat and did that, but I was dozing off while I was doing it, and that's not good because I cannot doze off now because I will never sleep tonight. So I think I am going to go outside and clean out my van. Just give it a wipe down, like get any trash out, give it a good vacuum and things like that. And I can take one of the car seats out now um, for summer and just keep one in there. That'll be good. So I think I'm going to go do that. So I am going to end this weekend vlog right now. Um, Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all had a wonderful Father's Day, however it is you celebrate. Um, but yeah, that's that. That's our weekend in a nutshell. Doug is off tomorrow. He took the day off. I don't think we're going to go down the shore. I think we're just going to hang around at home tomorrow. Um, I just need to rest. I need a day of rest. <laughs> Um, and we have a couple things that we actually, we have a couple things we want to do. I don't know. Maybe we'll find something fun to do around here. I'm just not up for a ride down the shore. Um, we have Bible study tomorrow night. So, oh yeah. And another reason I'm not going to the shore is I'm making a new dinner that I want to film. Um, so just, and that probably will be the only day I can do it this week, but we will see. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. So thank you so very much for taking time out of your busy day to spend it with me. I truly appreciate it. And that's all I have to say about that. Have a great one, everyone. And I will see you all in my next video.